my friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where I post a reading, writing book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today we're going to go over my planner lineup for 2024 and talk about some of my goals for the year. Um, I have four planners with me today. I have my writing planner, which is this um, pretty orange one. I have my daily planner, which is this blue cosmosy theme one. I have my yearly collections journal or long-term collections journal, just depending on how I feel like I'm using it at the time. Um, and this, you know, has this pretty falling star motif. And then this one with the magic spell book on the front of it is my reading journal for the year. We're going to start with um, my long-term collections because that's the one that I used last year and therefore um, we can discuss some of the changes that I have made uh, moving into the new year. So um, as I said last year I used this as my yearly collections journal and so it was decorated as so. Um, I have a list of all the birthdays in it, and then it had like a 23, 23 setup. As you can see, I ended up setting up a lot of pages that I thought that I would use um, that I didn't necessarily use. What I mostly used in this planner were my reading style pages, and that's what this is. Um, pretty much everything from here onward is reading related. So this stuff definitely got used all of this this all got used that page you can't see so yeah like these things i used but for the most part my daily reading challenge all of those things those all got used but for the most part the things at the front really didn't get used and the only thing other than the reading that i wanted to continue on in next year is this habit tracker that has like monthly tasks and weekly tasks and honestly the reason why I didn't use this was mostly because I've never set up a calendar with like the week of the year on it and it became such a pain to like try to figure out what week of the year I was on that it made me so angry like to just you know if I missed a week or two but I didn't know how many weeks I had missed and then I would have to like look up what week of the year am I on and then it just it became a hot mess um so we'll see later on how I plan to resolve that for next year. What I have in instead decided to use this for is for more of a long-term collection. The things that are in the front of this that I wanted to carry through will be in my daily journal. I had put in my Brandon Sanderson reading order in here, um, the order that I plan to read the books in, and then also um, Mercedes Lackey's Valdemar series, uh, the reading order for that. And so what I have done, I will show you later, but I did make myself a note uh, moving forward in this year's reading journal that these spreads are in here if I need to have access to them. So pretty much that's all I'm going to be using this for this year is any like long-term collections type things. Um, I'm going to be reading The Wheel of Time this year, so I will probably put The Wheel of Time reading order in here as well. Favorite author's backlog is pretty much what this, the plan for this book is going to be used from now on. I may do like movies or TV shows in the future, but for right now, favorite author's backlog is about all that's going on in this one. A another short and sweet one that we can look at here is my writing journal. I have not been writing much. I didn't do much last year. Probably won't do much this year. I just don't really feel it. So, you know, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. Pretty much the only thing I have in here so far is my writing dashboard, which is basically where I just have like all of the different steps that my books could be in and then each post-it note has either the name of a story or like the idea like this is my adult werewolf romance that is currently being drafted um, the other graveyard book is currently being plotted the Anku's curse is currently in revisions and then I have um, three books that are currently shelved for now um, so that's kind of just a quick look at where things are the only page that I set up in this for this year is a 2024 word count tracker which I had this in the long-term collections journal or the yearly journal for last year. Um, is This goes up to 250,000 words. I probably will not write 250,000 words, but if I do, I have enough space to mark them off. Each square is a thousand words. Um, last year I went to 55,000, which is more than I thought I was going to get, honestly. But as you can see, I'm feeling super confident in myself and the fact that I didn't even write the numbers in on this side. So 
that's what that is. We'll then go to the daily journal, the reading journal will be last because that's where all of the stuff is at. I will be posting at the same time that this video is going live. They should both be going live at about the same time. My actual me setting up my reading planner um, for some anybody who wants to sit and watch through that, you are more than welcome to. This is my daily planner, uh, my 2024 belongs to the Hex Library, some stickers, um, here lies all the fucks I give. Uh, this one's one of my favorites that's like my motto for the year, less bitchin, more witchin, make shit happen. Um, you know, you gotta do the damn thing to get the damn thing done. Um, I love this as a, as a skeleton reading a book. This is one more chapter. Love it. Just, you know, this is just the vibe, okay? As we all know, this is the vibe. Um, I decided last year I ended up using two planners. I used one for the first five months of the year and one for the second seven months of the year. I gave up on the first book a little early because I had done a bunch of cutouts and so it was um, starting to fall apart at the binding. Um, so I didn't do that in the seven months afterwards, but I did do six and one and seven in the other and they were both fairly full. So what I decided to do instead of having six months and six months, I decided to do daily planner and a reading planner together and that is why I was able to get rid of the yearly collections because I didn't want to have all of my like lists of all of like the books I read in the year to be split in between two books. So I have just a reading journal that will have all of that this year. Okay, so um, in here they have my word of the year is time, um, which is an indefinite and conscious duration regarded as that in which events succeed one another. Um, why? And that is because I want to continue last year's lesson of habit building by using time in more meaningful ways. Um, last year, my word of the year was progress, which was to for Jessica to learn how to build better habits. Did she do that? Not really, but you know, continuing the progress. You can't change your whole life in a year. I mean, you can, but sometimes you can't. Um, so. I did, as I said, set up the monthly and weekly. It's time to progress into building better habits. See, I used both of my words. Um, so I did two things differently this time. First is that I did some vertical lines along with the horizontal lines so that I can actually see like the month separation on those. But I also printed out the year with the week number on it. So I can just very easily go, okay, what week is this? This is week two. Okay, week two, what did I do in week two? And then I can mark off the things that I did in week two. Uh, most of these are cleaning tasks um, and like office reset tasks, things that I'm really bad about doing. I'm terrible at chores. So that's, that's where I'm at with that. I did skip a couple pages. After that, I have the, I can't even remember what this is called. My brain has completely left the building. <laughs> My future tracker future calendar, calendar, future, future plant. Anyway, um, I have all 12 months of the year here. I effed up July and put blue on it instead of green, but all of the rest of the match, uh, speaking of matching, um, I will show you this. You'll see a lot of these colors in the reading planner because that uh, the sticker theme came from the reading planner. Um, but I did pick out five of my um, Ohuhu markers that match and I will leave those the color numbers linked down below um, for in case you have the same sticker set that I have and you would like to know what oh hoo hoo markers match those. But yeah, so I can keep track of my future plans. Anyway, that's the thing. Um, and then, like I said, monthly, weekly, and then straight into January. Um, last year at some point I stopped doing a cover page like the month, I was straight going into the month. I went back to doing these in December because I liked having a place where I could do a, like these are the, the things that I wanna get done this month that don't have like a specific place where they need to be done, but I don't wanna to forget to do these things this month. And so I can set these up over here and then when I'm scheduling out my weeks, I can look at here and see what things on here do I need to put into the week. That way I don't forget to do things. Um, this was a stencil. I'm not that cool. And um, this is a sticker. This and this sticker are from uh, Planning with Kay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, last year I got a new printer, which prints fantastic, and I got a silhouette cutting machine, so I am printing all of my own um, stickers from Planning with Kay, and I am having the best time. Um, this is her Bujo Botanicals 
set. Um, so technically these are all bullet journals, um, but I use these in the setup for my reading journal and I think it was like the perfect thing to use for that. So I'm definitely excited about using that. So I plan on redoing my kitchen this year and by redoing I mean reorganizing, moving shelves and cabinets and things around. I'm not actually redoing the kitchen, but that's a whole other thing for a whole other day. Um, I am redoing my office, so that is in home projects. I don't have any video tasks on here yet. I also have a little flip down for my habits. I am trying something that Jashi Curran has been doing last year that worked out really well for her, which was a high and a low goal. So if I reach the high goal, I color it in in green, and if I reach the low goal, I'm coloring it in in pink. And then down here on this tab is where I just wrote in what my habits that I'm tracking are and what the high and the low is for those. So I had to run away for a minute and I'm not sure where I was at. Anyway, anyway, the monthly layout, which this is just two giant stickers that were available to me, so I utilized them. Uh, I've got sprints on here and birthdays, and I have been sticking with my weekly planner layout that I have been liking with the events down one side and then all of my tasks. Um, my YouTube schedule, which technically this week there isn't anything on the schedule. Well, Sunday, I guess there is stuff on the schedule, but that's neither here nor there. And then um, menu options, things that I have that I can make. I like to keep those in there as well. And then the other months, the, or the weeks rather, are set up um, the same. So ta-da-da, ta-da-da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, that's it, ta-da. I went ahead and used the Bujo Botanical uh, layout for January because I was using it for all of the beginning of the year in the reading planner, um, but I will skip to something else next month. I will change it. It won't be this the whole time, but I did want to use it for this month. And I did also in the back made a note to self of what the Bohuhu colors for the bot Botanical Bujo sticker set was and also a note um i have enough pages for approximately seven pages a month um so that's like one two three four five six and then i would have a seventh if it's a week or a month with five weeks so approximately if i have need an extra i've got the space for it as well one thing i forgot because i'm not thinking um in this my yearly collections. Why is it the only thing I was going to be using in here was these uh, reading order things. I lied. Um, as many of you know, I have, have in the past been using this gorgeous planner for my social media planner. However, it has blackout pages and I'm just not happy with it, mostly because I don't like using um, jelly pens, gel pens on it. Um, it's kind of a giant pain and, and I'm just, I'm not happy with this decision. Um, but I had to have this book because it was gorgeous. And I was like, I'm going to try blackout pages. I should have tried back blackout pages in a book that I didn't love the cover of so much because I would have loved to have had this be, um, something else, but you know, it's neither here nor there. So what I have done instead is I have set up some journaling pages in the back of this for my next quarter. Um, so I have quarter one, Monday through Sunday, um, the week that we are in, and then like this one's January, but it skips to February here. So I put February, um, they're dated, and then highlighted videos. This month is a little full, mostly because I didn't, I, I took December off unexpectedly, um, just because I wasn't feeling it. And so there's a bunch in here, a bunch of videos that I'm trying to play catch up on. And some of this has already not happened and that's fine. I'll move things around as I need to. Um, but as you can tell, I have Tuesday and Thursday videos with Saturday Lives planned for the entire quarter. And then we hit Q2 here. So I have this entire quarters of videos planned out. Will they stick that way? I don't know. Will more show up? It could be. Who knows? Not me, but that's what I'm using in here for my like social media. I do hope to start doing more on Instagram as well. And if I do that, it would be on the days that I'm not doing videos um, so that I could write those in here as well. And I would just color code it a different color. Right now I've got reds for lives and purples for videos. And if I decide to do something else, I will. And now we get to the baby. And again, as I said, there is an entire one hour and two minute video of me setting this up that's just set to music um, without any talking if you're interested in that, that kind of thing. Uh, my 2024 reading journal. I have 
use some stickers. So like these stickers, I just printed off of the internet onto some sticker paper and cut them out myself. These ones here are from, I believe her name is SLK Artworks, um, but I have a bunch of her stickers as well. I have some like magic stickers and then some reading stickers. Um, so I bought these to use for my, um, my grimoire as well, um, which I haven't really started on yet, but I will at some point, but I will link her down below because um, I got a lot of stickers from her and they are very affordable. So if you don't have a cutting machine, which I didn't have before when I ordered these, I highly recommend. Um, reading because murder is wrong. So as I mentioned earlier that I have the um, favorite authors backlist in that other book, I've made a flip out on here um, that shows other reading style collections and where I could find those at. Um, so this has a flip out that says favorite author backlist and that can be found in my yearly collections journal. Um, I wasn't sure, I definitely didn't want to transfer it over to this because I probably won't read all of those books this year. So I wanted to keep it in a book that will be a long running book. Basically that's where I'm going with that. Um, in here I made a pocket just for um, bookmark or whatever, you know, I've got it. It's there. Honestly, I don't need this page, this 2024 planner calendar page. I just did it because it was pretty. Okay. Just, this is it. This whole thing is just one sticker that I planted out, planted out, printed out from Planning McKay and it was gorgeous. These stickers are all of the Bujo Botanical stickers from Planning with Kay. And then I just did like some little asterisks and stars and diamonds to kind of fill in the empty space. You know, it really does a lot when you do like the fill in the back in the space thing. Like you don't realize how much it really does until you do it. And then you're like, yeah, it really adds something to the overall project. So at the beginning, I have my rating system. Um, what does each star mean? Um, for me, a one star means I hated it. Two is an actively dislike. Three is it was fine. Four is I liked it. Five is I loved it. And I give books a bonus point for making me cry. So I rate on a score of what do we score? YA and adult books are scored based off of cover, characters, plot, pace, intrigue, logic, world building, writing, and enjoyment. Mid-grade books are scored based off of cover, characters, plot, pace, engagement, world building, readability, theme, and enjoyment. Um, and again, if it makes me cry, it gets a bonus one. Um, how do we score? Each category is scored one through five, plus a bonus point for making me cry. Those points are added together and divided by the number of categories. I did do some updating to my rating scale this year um, because previously, a 2.5 I rated as a three star and I've changed my mind. I want a 2.5 to be rated as a two star because um, I read a lot of 2.5 books last year that I do not feel like deserve to be given a three star on Goodreads or wherever else I'm rating that is just a whole star rating. I rate on the quarter star. I round to the closest quarter um, when I divide them. So anything under a 1.75 is going to be a one star. A 1.75 to a 2.5 will be a two star. 2.75 to 3.25 will be a three star. 3.5 to 4.25 will be a four star and a 4.5 to a 5.25 is a five star and 5.25 means it got a five on all of the scores and got the extra bonus point for making me cry is the only way to get a 5.25 i do have a few of those every year i didn't have any this year but i do typically have like one or two but i didn't have any in 2024 or 2023 we have the daily reading challenge today is the seventh i have read a whopping one day so far this year doing great um, last year you've seen, I had that two big two page spread, which was fine, but this is, this is, this does exactly what I need to do. Daily reading challenge, year in pixels. Let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be and take up a bunch of paper. Uh, favorite book of 2024. You will see when I do my favorite book of 2023, I originally did like the book brackety thing, but this matrix makes way more sense. I got this from Jashi Curran as well. A lot of the layouts that I use, I got from Jashi Curran and what I didn't get from Jashi Curran, I took from Monica. <laughs> um, I will link both Jashi Curran and Monica down below. Uh, Monica is more Instagram than YouTube, but her Instagram is gorgeous and she has a lot of different um, layouts and stuff on there that she uses. Jess at Jashi Curran actually did a flip through of uh, Monica's Bujo on her channel earlier this year. I'll link that video down below. And there were so much stuff that I was like, that is a gorgeous way to do that. I don't know why I don't use that version. And so I have adapted a lot of my things to be that version because your girl 
needed some inspiration. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that I, I willfully took inspiration from both Jess and Monica. Um, but basically with this matrix system, so you, every month you have a favorite book of the month. So that's 12 books. And then I always go back through and add in four more because like some months, you know, you'll have a favorite book, but like maybe you had three five stars in one month and all three of those, like you had to pick one, like in that moment, that was your favorite. So that's like your favorite of the month. But then say there's a month where the highest rated book you had was a three star, but that one ends up getting put in this bracket. And that doesn't make sense to me. So I did 12 months and then four extras. And then basically what you do is, is say, I've got all of my book titles written down here and say book A is House of Night and book B is City of Bones. So I would go here, A, B, and in this square, I would say, which is my favorite, A or B? And I would say, B, City of Bones over House of Night, I don't know. And then you would go A versus whatever book C was, and then A whatever versus what book D was. And then when you get to B, you go B versus C, and B versus D, and B versus E, B versus, and then all the way down until you get to the end. And then you go through and you add up however many numbers you see that A, or how many times do you see a B, and how many times do you see a C, and how many times do you see a D. So you can go through and then whatever got the most, and then it like gives you a definitive list of like your top 14 books, basically, out of that system, theoretically. And yes, I did do that for this year's books, so you will see that in a video coming up. We then have the reading log. Um, this is exactly the same as it was last year, just a reading log title, a bunch of numbers. Um, I forgot when I was doing this first page to put in the title author rating thing at the top. So it just kind of got wrote in at the very top. Um, but as you can see on this page, it's, you know, on the actual line. I did three pages of these. Is that very cocky of me? Yes, I will never get to 218 books. However, I read 152 this past year. and I didn't figure there was any point in stopping at three pages or, you know, on this page and then having this page be something else. So I just did a full full three pages. We then have my reading goals for the year. So this is kind of like where we can talk about some things here. Um, this year I will be doing uh, balancing the books bingo. There's a bingo board back here a little bit later too. There'll be some more talk about this in the first episode of like this balancing the books type of thing that I'm doing. Um, but basically my goal is to keep my unread physical TBR under 60. However, I've made the distinction that if I have 12 books in a series on my shelf, only the first book counts towards the 60 because I can't read those other books without having read the first one. And so I like to have choice because I am a mood reader, but if I only allow myself 60 books on my unread TBR and I have three full series that are 15 books each, then that means I've essentially only got 18 books to choose from instead of 60. So that is the distinction that I'm making for this year. Um, so I have the month, how many books am I starting with on my physical TBR? How many did I read? How many did I unhaul? How many did I haul? What the final number is? And then what is my surplus of, of plus or minus 60? So if I have over 60 books on my physical under TBR, I have until the following month to get back to below 60. So I'm not going to be like, oh, if I have 61, I have to unhaul a book. No, I just have to try harder the next month to get to that 60. That is my goal. Okay, my Goodreads goal is 104. It's always two books a week. Will I put the tally marks in here? Who knows, not me. I would like to do 12 reading vlogs this year. I would like to do 12 library vlogs this year. You will see more of that, of what this is gonna be. The first episode should be up later in January. Um, I would like to read 24 books off of my physical TBR from anything pre-2024. And I would like to read 24 new releases in 2024. That, that's it. That's that's my goals. Okay. We then have the anticipated releases for the year. This is one thing that I got from Monica before I just had like a page with a list of them on it, but this one's just like each individual month by itself. It looks pretty. These stickers are from the planning with K from the Bujo botanical thing. Loved it. Um, these, I just actually, I downloaded, um, Kay's font. She has the font available on her Patreon. And so I downloaded her font and I just like all of these titles, I just typed them up on a page and then cut them out myself, um, on the sticker paper. This is another one that I really took from, from Monica. And I so far like the setup, uh, read a thought book clubs and challenges. I have this page, but I had the challenge itself had an each individual square. And so like, I would have, you know, Wheatberry books would be a square and the besties book club or 
whatever, they would have their own square. So rather than do that, I have each month has its own box. And then up here, we have a key that if you flip up, it shows you what color is for what readathon. So in this one, I have the eye of the world and that is in yellow. So if I go to yellow, yellow is the wheel of time read along. For Eye of the World, I don't need that because I know that the title of the first Wheel of Time book is Eye of the World, but I don't know what the titles of the rest of them are, so I'm going to need that later. Um, Green to Kill a Mockingbird is Wheatberry Books, so that's how we will be using that. Again, this idea completely came from Monica. Um, a list for GNFs and unhauls. Do I ever get to the second page of these? Sometimes. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. Uh, my arc tracker, which I've already filled in with the arcs that I have so far. I am three, maybe four behind right now. Uh, that's it's not terrible, actually. It's not terrible. And then I have a These Books with Self Destruct. And this year I'm going to be doing this a little different. And I haven't made my complete list yet, but rather than just like pick 12 books for whatever reason, I have separate categories that I'm going to be doing. Like, you know, the oldest book on my physical TBR, um, a book that came from a book box. Um, I have a list somewhere. I don't know where the list is, which is why this isn't filled out because I haven't found the list yet. If you could see my office, you would understand. Um, then we have Bingo Board from Hell 2024, which is from Literary Diversions, which is Leanne. Um, I will link her video on the Bingo Board from Hell down below for you as well. Um, basically, she has been doing a bingo board last year and she is doing a new one this year. And you can either use her bingo or you can make your own. She get, left us these printables um, that were blank so that we could make our own. And so you know, my bingo board from hell for 2024, these are nine squares that I want to try to reach. And I will be updating you these um, in my, I'm calling it balancing the bingo this year. Um, balancing the books bingo. So I have 12 books by 12 friends that I want to read. I would like to be under 60 physical TBR by the end of the year. Um, this I'm going to keep track of like how many months do I reach it? I would ideally like to be under it 10 months out of the year, but if I stay under it the whole year, that's great too. Uh, the 24 new releases, 12 book club books, because I'm great about joining book clubs and not reading the books. Uh, 24 physical TBR backlist, 12 library books, 10 rereads, because I do want to focus on rereads instead of like all new books all year. 10 big books, which is books over 500 pages, and then 10 finished series by the end of the year. So at the end of each month, I'll just be checking in with you to let you know where I'm at with those numbers. I will be doing more on this page that has something to do with keeping track of these, but I haven't figured that out quite yet. So it is currently blank. Um, this is, we're calling it the secret project because I've been talking about it for a month. So it's not really a secret. Um, but I do plan to do full series vlogs for these series in October. So I will be casually reading these throughout the year. So I wanted to make a list of like all of the books that I will be reading. And I need to make a note of how many I need to read a month to be on target. So I will be reading the entire Sweep series by Kate Tiernan, the entire Wick Wicked series by Nancy Holder and Debbie Vigay, the entire Circle of Three series by Isabel Bird, and the entire Twitches series by H.B. Gilmore and Randy Reisfeld. That's the goal anyway. Will it happen? I don't know, but that's that's my goal for by, before October to read all of these. It's a lot of books to read by October, I know, but they are short YA. Um, I do have to read them physically with my eyeballs, so that's another problem, but uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I then left an empty page for in case I come up with something else. And then we get into January. Um, I have these, again, beautiful printouts by Planning with Kay. Um, and so for this, I will be marking down any like week long readathons or when I finish a book or whatever. If I need to like schedule, if I have a busy month and I need to schedule out like how much time I have to read each book, I will be using these to like schedule with. Um, but for right now, all I have is the Winter Wing Readathon that is from the 5th through the 11th. So I have that written on here just to keep track of that. And then we have my space for new releases, which there are three this month, a space for backlist arcs, which I am behind on three. And then there's two that are like come out in January. A haul, which I haven't hauled anything yet, a DNF and unhaul, which I haven't DNF or unhauled anything yet. And then a space for red books, a space for my TBR, and then my group and challenge TBR. These are two different things. So this is just TBR that I want to read. This is my group and challenge TBR. So anything that is like a group book or um, any readathons that I have going on. So what I did was there is a TBR-a-thon going on in January hosted by Leandra, the TBR Zero. So that will link down below. Um, and there are a bunch of different ways that you can do this 
readathon and I'm doing the this or that because it's best for mood readers and I did this as a flip out so I have 1 through 12 because there are 12 things on here and then I will be writing in um, what I chose and then what book I am reading for that. So for number 12 it is fantasy or nonfiction. I'm reading the nonfiction which is Make Time. That is the book that I'm currently reading. And then also as I said, winter ween. Um, I made this little flip out here um, that has the Instagram prompts, which I haven't done any of and probably won't, um, but that's outside of the point. And then the reading prompts and then the books that I plan to read for those reading prompts are in there. And so that is January. I do plan once I finish a book to actually put the picture of the book in and then write a review, but as I haven't finished anything yet, I have not made it that far. Note to future Jessica, you should not put the add-in things all on the top. You should put some things at the bottom because otherwise your book is going to be bigger at the top than it is at the bottom. Anyway, sometimes you see this before it gets filled out, sometimes you see it after. But that is my 2024 reading journal that I am very much happy with. I don't know if I'm going to decorate my monthly based off of my monthly and my daily planner, or if I'm gonna keep using the Bujo Botanicals for the whole year. I might only use like the reading ones because she does have a few that are book related. There's Luna's Library and there is um, like a typewriter one. Um, it's like a newspaper. There is um, Books and Plants, which is like books and coffee and tea and plants. So I may use just those ones in here and just cycle through them. But then like Halloween, obviously I'm gonna to wanna to use like Halloween stickers and at Christmas I'll wanna use Christmas stickers. So I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how I feel, but I haven't completely made up my mind yet. I, again, I love this, this sticker, it makes me so happy. Um, anywho, that is my reading planner for 2024. My daily planner for 2024 what I will be using in this yearly collections journal for 2024 and my writing planner for 2024. Um, if you made it this far in the video, please leave me a notebook or writing or any kind of book related emoji down below. Again, if you want to check out the full plan with me of my reading planner setup, as I said, it's an hour and two minutes long and it's got some some bumping music, so it may just be like a fun place to hang out. Um, it should be posted at a similar time to this video. So that is all I have for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye.